stepping off the cliff, gotta take a trip slow ride when I'm off the shit. What's up, Jack Nation? It's your man Jack, Justin G. We're back on another one. I know it's been a really, really long time, but uh you may have noticed we're in a different location other than the garage, more so because we moved. Um, I have other videos I'm currently editing and they will be up shortly. Until then, um, I decided to upgrade uh, my wife's and I desktop computer to cater more towards what we'll use it for versus what we currently have. What we're using currently is a it's an Intel G5 pre-built with a 2060 Super um, i9 10900F. And it came with, I think, 16 megabytes of RAM or something like that. Um, and it's fine, but there is, it's kind of a hot box. And I do what I can to try to upgrade it. But for the most part, overall, just doing something custom for us specifically to meet all our needs and that we can potentially upgrade and not be garnered by proprietary components. Building our own PC is probably the best way to go. So with that, I'm not going to delay the inevitable. So let's get hot. These are all the components that will be going into this build. Honestly, I really wish I was able to get my hands on a 3080 Ti, but you know what? At the time, I got extremely lucky coming across an Norris 3060 Ti by Gigabyte, so I figured this should hold me over until the 40 series cards are available. And if I'm lucky, again, I might find that 30 Ti I've been hunting for. I started with my Oris FO48U since my plan is to wall mount it and give it that barely floating above the desk look. This is Gigabyte's 48 inch 4K OLED panel. Ironically, it's the same exact panel used in LG's 4K OLED lineup today. It supports 120 hertz refresh rates, one millisecond response times, comes with two HDMI 2.1 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4 and has built in speakers and it supports 300 by 300 VESA wall mounting. I selected this monitor for two reasons. One, it checked all the blocks for supporting 120 hertz gaming at 4K on both the Xbox Series X and PS5. And two, it provides us with the surface area of two monitors in one. And of course, all in glorious 4K. In the box, we get one HDMI 2.1 cable, one DisplayPort cable 1.4, one USB 3.0 cable, and not one, not two, but three different power cables for other countries, including US and Europe. And of course, and certainly not least, the legs that we won't be using. with the computer there you know what i mean like where where so you got rid of two monitors to get three monitors to put a tv this one to put a tv it's a monitor yeah. if this said lg it would have been a tv this is the Wallabot DIY Plus X, aka my handy dandy stud finder. Not only does it allow me to obviously locate studs inside finished walls, but it also identifies electrical cables, metal studs, and sees through masonry walls as well. This is the cable organizer that will be used to power the monitor, and this is the mount that I'll be using to mount it on the wall. It's going to go about right here, and I'll have links below to show you where you can find yours. So using that same stud finder, I've already identified where I'm going to install that mount on the wall. So what I'm doing is... Lining up the bracket to see where all my holes are going to line up on the monitor. There it is. So I have holes lined up. Good to go. I'm going to measure this edge right here to the top of that and that will tell me where I need to put the mount on the mount. So 
So with that same measurement that I just took, I'm able to tell where I have to install this mount so the TV can line up where I want it to. This is where the cable organizer kit's gonna be installed for the monitor. I could be long enough. I'm trying. I'm gonna get longer ones, but I'm putting these in here now because at least they're in here. I take up longer ones to it. It's easy to pull through them. And here we are, the end result. And it looks like it's sitting right on the desk when in fact we know it isn't. And this is the look that I was aiming for. I know it's a little crooked. I'll adjust it here soon. Um, but without further ado, let's keep it moving forward. Finally, onto what everyone, including myself, has been waiting for, the build. This is the Aorus Z690 Pro, and it supports 12th gen Intel CPUs with the LGA 1700 socket. This board is also DDR5 ready with data transfer frequencies up to 6200 MHz. This is Intel's i9-12900K. It is currently the best CPU you can find for a custom gaming rig, and this is going to provide us a flawless experience, at least I hope so, for the computer. With this being my very first build, I felt like it was time to give us, as in my wife and I, something nice. And with that, we went with the Corsair's Dominator Plus RGB DDR5 memory with beautiful Capellix RGB LEDs. And they come in black, since the theme here obviously is Batman's Bat Computer. So for hard drives, I went with Oris's 1TB NVMe M.2 SSD. So what's that mean? Well, in the words of my man Flossy Carter, flash his specs, bro flagship specs. This SSD is capable of reading up to 7,000 megabytes a second and writing 5,500 megabytes a second. This SSD is also bundled in its own nano carbon coated aluminum heatsink that we're not going to be using due to the Z690 Pro already having its own. For my cooling solution, I went with the NZXT Kraken Z73 360mm all-in-one AIO water cooler. Word on the street is this 12900K runs a little warm, right? And if you don't have the proper cooling solution, your whole computer might catch fire. I don't know if that's real or anything, but we're gonna go ahead and install this water cooler to keep that from happening. I'm a big fan of keeping things uniform. So I want the best RBG fans, period. I don't care what anyone else thinks. Come at me, bro. I'll probably use the NZXT fans in another build. Maybe when I build one for the minions. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Good job, me. Stay tuned for that one. Hey, and while I'm here, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for all my future content. Here is the Leon Lee O11D Mini, and yes, the D stands for dynamic. I didn't want something super clunky, and I thought this would be an amazing showpiece for my first PC build. And who knows, later on, I might go for full custom loop. The rear side of the case is completely modular. You can remove this part of the case and change from a horizontal GPU configuration to a vertical GPU configuration. And we'll show you that once we get to that part of the build. This specific case is meant for EATX, ATX, MATX, and ITX motherboards. And since we're going with an ATX board, we have to install this extension bracket that allows me to install just that. Truth, you can fit a 360mm RAD into the Leon Lee O11D Mini with an ATX board if you offset the RAD with these brackets by Leon Lee. I know what you're thinking. Where can I find them? Well, you can find them at the Leon Lee store on AliExpress. And I have the link below. Because I opted to use this case, I'm a little limited on the type of power supplies that I'm able to use. Not only that, at the time of recording this video, I was unaware of another power supply that was rated for 1000 watts. Regardless, I went with the Cooter Masters SFX 850 watt power supply.
All right. Moving right along. You remember earlier when I said I'd get back to talking about that vertical GPU bracket? Well, this is it. This is Leon Lee's PCIe 4 vertical GPU bracket. And this is what makes installing the graphics card vertically possible. On another note, the second best thing about these Leon Lee Uni fans is that because of the way they snap into each other, you are able to use just one cable to power the fans in RGB. And no, I don't mean one cable for both, but the connector at the end of the assembly reduces the amount of cables you would normally have to attempt to manage drastically. And finally, the GPU. I went with the Aorus 3060 Ti Elite for this build because these fans, when they're on, they're freaking amazing. And truth be told, with the prices of graphics cards coming down, I may upgrade to that 3080 Ti sooner than later. But for right now, damn, these are good looking. And finally, I've got all the cable management pretty much done, and this tray behind here makes everything really easy to hide. So we're about to just button this thing up. Hey, it works. It works. This is one head of the setup. For the architect's office. So here we are at the finish line, and I went with Logitech's G502 Wireless Lightning Mouse. I think that's the name. Could be saying, oh, light speed, not lightning. I also took advantage of this mouse pad, which actually charges the mouse as you use it, which is super convenient. It means I really don't have to plug in anything except, well, except for the mouse pad, of course. And lastly, I went with Logitech's G915 tactile right tactile keyboard yo this thing is absolutely quiet absolutely quiet and it came out so good oh man i'm about ready to install windows and get this thing going just wanted you guys to take a peek and do this All right, and that'll wrap this one up. Hey, thank you so much for you guys that have been following. For you new guys, welcome. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Yes, I know that I didn't put that side panel in right, but I did fix it later. Um, and we will see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned because the videos are coming out really, really soon.